Thank you for joining us to learn more about One Path to AICP. I'm Jen Rolla, the AICP Certification Manager, and I'm going to provide an overview of the One Path process, including updated submission requirements and self-evaluation tools. Next slide, please. Uh, before we get started, though, let's quickly cover the benefits of becoming a certified planner. Earning AICP will help to distinguish you in the profession, and it allows you to get an edge in the job market. And it enables you to demonstrate your skills and planning expertise. You'll stay on top of emerging trends and the latest issues affecting planners. And AICP demonstrates your commitment to ethical planning. Next slide. Uh, here you'll see an overview of the new certification process. We've merged the multiple paths to certification into one single streamlined path for everyone that still includes the same benefits of the older models. Qualified members can begin the path to AICP while still earning their degree in professional planning experience and can register to test for the AICP certification exam. After passing the exam, One Path opens the opportunity for everyone to earn the AICP candidate designation. It's no longer limited. The reorganization of the steps enables members who've already earned their experience to complete the certification process sooner, but the three steps don't have to be completed in the same cycle. Next slide, please. Now we'll cover the steps in a bit more detail. Uh, any member who feels prepared to test for the exam can register for an upcoming exam cycle. We suggest using the exam content outline to evaluate your knowledge of the topics to determine whether you're ready to test. Registration is simple and straightforward. You'll confirm you understand the certification requirements, agree to abide by the code of ethics, submit the registration payment, then you'll be able to schedule an exam appointment for the upcoming window. Next slide, please. You'll test for the exam the month after registering. We strongly encourage you to be, uh, begin studying well in advance of registering. This includes reaching out to your chapter PDO for local studying opportunities and using the free available online study resources we have, like the exam content outline, PAS reports, and policy guides. We're also providing an updated exam prep training session that's modeled off the new content outline that'll be recorded and posted to our website later this month. An expanded feature is all members who pass the exam will become an AICP candidate. It's no longer limited to PAB graduates in the candidate program. You can leverage this credential in the job market and with your employer and can use the new digital badge to include in your resume, LinkedIn profile, and email signature. Members who pass the exam will remain a candidate until they've earned the required experience, whether that's a few weeks or a few years, and you'll need to maintain your APA membership to use the designation. Next slide, please. Uh, members can begin the third and final step of the path after they've graduated and earned the required amount of professional planning experience. This chart shows the experience eligibility requirements needed to begin step three. Uh, we've developed additional resources in determining what sort of degree qualifies as a non-PAB graduate degree in planning that requires a minimum of three years of experience, and it's linked here in the chart. Next slide, please. The experience eligibility requirements and professional planning criteria for certification have not changed with this update. Your qualifications for AICP are submitted in the experience assessment. You'll need to provide your education history in section one, which includes university and program info, degree level, graduation date, and verification of your degree. And we accept one of the following three forms of degree verification. You can provide a copy of your diploma, official university transcripts, or a letter from your university confirming graduation. And we use this information to determine how much experience you need to provide, like we discussed in the last slide. In section two, you'll provide your employment history, including a detailed summary of your planning related responsibilities in each role you submit. Um, and you'll need to provide enough employment experience to meet the experience eligibility requirements. After you've quantified your experience, you'll qualify it in the experience assessment in section three. The assessment uses professional planning criteria that the AICP commission established to evaluate your experience. 
The checklists are meant to use holistically to show how all of the experience you've submitted satisfies the criteria, while the open response fields take a more micro look at your experience, where you'll provide a single example from a submitted position to respond to each criteria. Once you've submitted your assessment, it'll be reviewed by experienced AICP planners, and you'll be notified of the outcome in about four weeks. Next slide, please. And finally, we developed eligibility pre-check documents in response to some of the most common questions we get from members interested in AICP. The planning experience worksheet is one of them, and it'll help you determine if your experience is eligible. The interactive calculator is super helpful to help total up the experience you've already earned to help you plan how soon you can begin the experience assessment. The curriculum worksheet, uh, which we discussed in a previous slide, will help members with non-PAB master's degrees in planning determine if they qualify for three or four years of experience. And the planning experience assessment worksheet enables members to review exact criteria they'll be judged on and prepare responses well in advance. And um, the AICP certification guide is our holy grail document that details the whole certification process and should definitely be read before registering for the exam and beginning the process. Next slide, please. So we discussed several new changes for the spring cycle and moving forward. So if you have any questions on the updates or how you fit into the new one path, please reach out to us at AICP at planning.org and be sure to include your full name and APA ID number so we can best help you. Thanks for joining us. Bye.